Hello and welcome to Girl Tries Games. We're playing Siberia. And in the last video we arrived here in Barkstadt and we um, were trying to figure out a way to get our train running again. Um, so we've pretty much solved that issue but now we need to get the mammoth doll back in order to make our train go. And in order to do that we have to go attend this professor's lecture here at the university. All right, so we're going up to the lecture hall now. Ah, there you are, Miss Walker. Good, good. Uh, take a seat quickly. I'm impatient to start my lesson. Two students, <laughs> and one's asleep. My young friends, a very exciting discovery, unimaginable up until only a few hours ago, has come into my hands and has finally allowed me to complete my study on the mysterious Yukol people. Lights, please. The Yukols are a people from the far north about whom very little is known. They live far away, very far away, on the frozen borders of Siberia. This distance and the climatic conditions of the region, which are unfavorable to human existence, have limited the size His voice of the is pretty quiet against that projector. The, reach of the, scientific world. the handful of slides that follow are actually the only documentation we have in our possession. It was a oh, Russian explorer who made these drawings and put these photographs a hundred or so years ago. Today, we owe what we know about the Yukon people and their culture to him. We know that the origins of the Yukos date back to the last <laughs> Ice Age. Curiously, evidence of their presence has been found in Western Europe, and more precisely, in the prehistoric caves at the heart of the Alps. These people, it seems, undertook a long migration, over centuries, towards the far north of the globe. The reasons for this migration are due to the importance of the mammoth in their craft, trade, and culture. They used them for transportation, and as beasts of burden, the mammoth brought them meat, skins, fat, and ivory. Man and animal lived in symbiosis. There's no doubt about it. Hmm. Mammoths started to drift away from the region due to changing climatic conditions, and the Yukos followed them to the north, the edges of Siberia. Prehistoric cave drawings, identified as Yuko in origin, first led me to the extraordinary hypothesis that the Yukos had managed to domesticate the mammoth. They are, to the best of our knowledge, the only prehistoric people to represent a man riding a mammoth. <laughs> Today, because of this genuine mammoth skin effigy, identified by myself as an authentic Neolithic object, I can confirm this hypothesis. Yuko forebearers managed to tame mammoths. Prehistoric man uses little imagination. He draws what he sees and represents scenes from real life. This familiar day-to-day -day object is actually a children's toy. As we have seen, Yukol existence was inextricably linked to that of the mammoth. They used its skin for clothing and to make the roofs and walls of their houses. They used the tusks to build the frameworks of their homes as well as weapons, tools, and jewelry. Curiously, the disappearance of the mammoth 12,000 years ago had no immediate effect on the Yuko's way of life. It seemed that for a long time after, the people maintained their strong bond with the mammoth through the centuries. As incredible as it may seem, the Yuko people have continued right up until the start of this century to feed themselves on mammoth meat and to use the skin for clothing and shelter. The ivory craftwork industry is still flourishing. It would appear right. that to preserve ancestral customs, the Yukos learned how to exploit through the centuries the large number of frozen mammoth carcasses that were perfectly preserved in the ice of the Siberian tundra. Sure. They have been able to live mainly off this enormous freezer stock for almost 30 centuries. As plausible as this explanation may seem, it seems it is not enough for the scientific community who, I will confess, is greatly perplexed by the question. In the absence of acceptable scientific <laughs> evidence, we have so to make do with Yuko Shaman artifacts. The research department that I have the honor to represent today 
lends no credence to the myths and legends that these tribal charlatans peddle. We have to take their stories at face value, mere tales to while away the long Siberian winter. The legend of the Siberian ice arm is a very good example, and you are invited to find out for yourselves from the pamphlet that I had passed around to you. This legend would have us believe that today, somewhere on a lost island to the north of Siberia, there are living mammoths still in existence, a sort of hangover from the Ice Age. This small herd has been miraculously preserved for more than 120 centuries by the Yukol's tender cave. The island on which the pachyderms are said to live is called Siberia. My friends, I advise you to resist the temptation you may have to believe in this pish and tish. Pish and tish. Siberia is not charted on any map, and the idea that mammoths have survived to the 21st century is an idle scientist's pipe dream. The Yukals were sadly among the first victims of the colonization of continental Siberia led by the Russians in the 20th century. The Kolkals and Sovkals systems, as well as the exploitation, disdain, and humiliation people had to suffer, marked a definitive break in the Yukal's traditional lifestyle. And since the collapse of the communist regime, the Yukal population finds itself confronted with the same political and social upheavals that other Siberian communities are experiencing. There are two consequences to arise from this. Some Yukals have lost their tribal identity and have integrated into the Russian population. Others, however, have sought long and hard to re-establish links with their ancestral culture that was lost under the Soviet <clears throat> regime. Now, at the oh start gosh, of the 21st this is almost as long century, as Anna's journal. the last true surviving Yukals have gone to live on the vast territories of their ancestors. Nobody knows today where they live or how they survive. Their very existence would be a matter for speculation if they did not turn up periodically at the tundra's most isolated fur trading posts to exchange mammoth tusks for essential items. There ends my lecture for today. Wow. Thank you for being <laughs> among us today, Miss Walker. Oh. Please make your way to the laboratory where you will find your mammoth doll. There are also photocopies of my lecture should you so require them. All right. So basically, I think out of all of that, the most important thing we got out of it, that there is a legend, that there's an island of Siberia with a Y, um, where mammoths still live today, and that they can be domesticated. Alright, so he wants us to head back to... Can we go in this room now? Or is it still locked? No point. It's locked. No point. Alright. Um, so he wants us to go back down and talk to him to get the mammoth doll. So let's head back down because we need the mammoth doll to get on our train. Alright, so let's head back down to the laboratory where he probably is. All right, let's go. <laughs> she runs and then catches herself like, oh god, I'm gonna fall running. Running in heels is hard. Professor, it's me. I've come to pick up the mammoth doll. The doll is waiting for you there, Miss Walker. Please take good care of it. Of course. Don't worry. I'm beginning to get quite attached to it myself. Can I trouble you just a little longer? With pleasure, Kate. I'm all ears. Um... I must congratulate you for your lecture. You were right. The subject is absolutely fascinating. Absolutely. I never believed that mammoths could be so interesting. I paid attention to every what single word. <laughs> Did Hans Varlberg agree with your hypothesis on the Yukos being able to tame mammoths? 
Now, Hans was no man of science. His pathological obsession was to find mammoths that were still in existence. Such a hypothesis is somewhat overblown, don't you think? I don't know. You don't believe in it yourself? Mammoths died out thousands of years ago. Of this, we are certain. Today, the only mammoths in Siberia are frozen ones. Huh? Do you know where Hans might have gone after his stay here in Barakstadt? No, but I would not be surprised if he left in search of the Yukals, or what is left of them today. I wouldn't be surprised either. All right, I think I'll that's leave you in peace. That. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. All right, let's grab our little doll and leave this place. All right, bye, Professor. Thanks. Okay. I wonder if the second game is as slow as this one is. <laughs> I mean, I like the story. I think it's interesting, and I love puzzle games. We have to figure out what you have to do, but the slowness is kind of... Okay, back to our train where I think we should be ready to go, hopefully. Let's find out where we'll be next. Say bye to the station master. Thanks for the bottle of wine, sir. Wonder what we're gonna do with it. I feel like everything we've had in our inventory has had some sort of use so far. We'll see if the wine ends up having any use. the boat left us yet or if they're stuck too behind the wall we haven't yet figured out a way to open it is that the boat all the way up there I can't even tell all right let's get up on the train and tell Oscar we're ready to go oh but we got to put the mammoth doll back first Let's go do that. All right, Mammoth doll, you go back to your little house here. All right, and let's go tell Oscar, let's go. All right, Oscar. Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. I am waiting to continue our journey. Well, let's do it. Oscar, if you tell me one more time something's missing, I'll... Everything is ready. <laughs> Good. Take your seat, Kate Walker. We are leaving. I'll... Okay... <laughs> what was that about? Why did she seem so upset? Here we go. I guess the gate will open as we approach it, hopefully. A personal train, that would be really nice. Okay, I guess we stopped. What's the problem now? Um, should we go this way?
What's going on over here? Maybe we have to tell someone to open the gate? What are you doing there, Oscar? Oh, Oscar. It is imperative that we comply with railroad and customs regulations, Kate Walker. Is it imperative? Oscar, don't you think we could drop the trifling details once and for all? We need an exit visa to get beyond the wall, Kate Walker. <sighs> and you wouldn't know Great. where I could get one of them from, would you? There is usually some form of authority stationed at a guard post that is strategically positioned to issue such a visa. Okay, guard post. I don't remember seeing a guard post. Okay. See you later, Oscar. Yes, Kate Walker. I wonder if it's on the other side? Here maybe. There's a key. I wonder how that works. Hmm. Hans Vorarlberg sure did have a lot of influence around here, didn't he? Um, alright, let's try to go to the other side of the train, see if there's a guard post over there. there if there's no reason what where would there be a guard post hmm. I don't want to run back I feel like there's gotta be something around here because I don't feel like they would push you all the way to this edge for nothing Go back to the ticket booth. Maybe Oscar will tell us where it is. I didn't really ask him any questions. It's gotta be around here. I, I don't remember seeing a guard post. I feel like we've explored this whole city already numerous times. Oh, can we go over here? Nice. Oscar, let me in. Oh look, is that a door over there? No point. It's locked. Looks like a door. Booyah. She won't run this time. Guard post. All right, let's go up the stairs. Take ten minutes. Phone call again. We're so popular. Hello, Kate. Oh, is that you? What's going on? Well, I finally got the mechanical train wound, and I hope it's going to take me to Hans Varlberg. I had to sort things out with a couple of weirdo sailors, and they probably ripped me off. But now I'm blocked behind <laughs> this massive wall. Weirdo you sailor. should see it. It's huge. I'm not talking about that. I want to know what's going on with Dan. Oh. What do you mean? He I changed his Facebook status to single. He said you'd argue. <laughs> that's a bit over the top. Things got a bit heated the last time we called. That's all. No need to go overboard. I don't mean to be Miss Melodramatic, but he didn't seem in such great shape. He had his down in the dumps head on. Oh. <laughs> like Dan has a down in the dumps head. Well, yeah, when that shock of hair flops over his forehead and his eyes mist up and his eyebrows kind of crease together. I'd never noticed. Maybe I did go a bit too far, but he's got such a goody two shoes image of me that sometimes I just lose it. And this case is taking up a lot of headspace. I was just looking for a bit of compassion. Well, you sure got mine. So oh, what's going down? Like I said before, I'm kind of getting somewhere, but it's slow. This Hans Vorlberg guy is getting more and more fascinating by the day. Okay, well, anyway, it doesn't sound like you're bored. Not like back here in the office. 
Every day is boredom day. It's just no fun without you. Uh. When are you coming back? Shouldn't be long, I hope. Look, I've got to go. See you soon. Well, call us again real soon. And be easier on Dan next time, huh? He's the I'll one try. who's snappy. Shit. Alright. I'm not sure what the point of these um, phone calls is, but... No point. It's locked. All right, we can't go to the windmill. So let's try going this way. All right, we could see the train. Let's cross to the other side. And... Ooh, telescope. Oh, and there's a guy in here. I didn't even see you. Good day to you, sir. He's not even, like, surprised. It's like, what are you Captain doing Captain Melatesta, Commander-in-Chief of the Barakstad Border Post, at your service, madam. Um, alright. Can't ask him for help. We can't ask him about the train. Let's my introduce ourselves. My name is Kate Walker. I've been assigned by my company to find a man who was supposed to be living in Siberia. What a peculiar mission. Taking so many risks for such a futile goal. Oh, thanks for your Captain, confidence. Captain, to my mind, the military zeal with which you insist on guarding this meaningless wall strikes me as equally futile. <laughs> I should be offended by your words, miss. But I forgive you. Because you are young and unaware of the very real dangers lurking in store for us. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's talk about the mission. I need a visa to cross the wall and to continue my journey to the east. They told me that you are the only person in a position to issue such a visa. Indeed. This responsibility is part of my duties. However, I am not currently issuing visas because not. nobody must venture beyond the wall. And why not? It's far too dangerous, in particular for a lady of your standing who is traveling unescorted. Dangerous? What exactly do you mean, Captain? The enemy, miss. The enemy. The enemy. I've been observing them for several years through my telescope. There's one particular horseman stationed yonder. For years? He's a scout from the invading enemy army. And he's been spying on us. So I have to be extremely vigilant. He knows that I know he's there, you understand? And as long as he I keep my I eye on him, I know that he, he knows. won't dare try anything. Are you sure? Please, take a look for yourself. Okay, let's ask him if he knows Hans. Is the person who takes care of the gate anywhere around? There is no person who takes care of the gate. Believe you me, ma'am. I have been the one and only guardian of this gate since 1968. That year I took over the position from the late Lieutenant Colonel Malatesta, my own father. In that case, can you tell me how the mechanism works? It sure looks complicated to me. Not at all. It is child's play for anyone who takes the time to work out its surprisingly straightforward logic. And from the looks of your locomotive, it shouldn't pose you any problems. Okay. Why do you say that? When I caught sight of your formidable locomotive, I immediately said, heavens, only Hans Vorlberg could design such an engine. So he doesn't know. I know, know what him. I'm talking about, <laughs> ma'am because he invented the gate's original mechanism. It was his last creation here in Barkstadt. So you know Hans Varlberg? No, I mean, not personally. I was only a baby when he stayed in Barkstadt. My father spoke often of him, and I knew about his inventions. He left very many things behind him. I know. In any case, I noticed that his fantastic knack for inventing has not deteriorated with age. Uh, how's he doing? I don't oh. know. <laughs> In fact, I don't actually know him. I'm searching for him. An inheritance matter. I hope his train is going to lead me to him. And why not? His inventions are always full of surprises. All right, bird. Between the station <laughs> aviary and this bleak wall, the change in atmosphere is radical, don't you think? It's been a long time since I've been at liberty to judge, miss. My duties forbid me from abandoning my post. All right. Don't mind me if I retire, Captain. 
please, madam. My respects. So let's check out this telescope he's talking about. Let's see if we can see the scout. Uh, that looks kind of blurry. How strange. I can't see a Cossack horseman at all. There's just a dead tree in the middle of an empty plain. That poor captain must have really bad eyesight. <laughs> All right. So, I see some glasses here. Maybe we can convince him to look in with his glasses. Look. Broken glasses. If they belong to the captain, then he sure has eye problems going by those lenses. All right. Ooh, it looks like we could fill up the wine glasses. Let's try that. I don't need to do that again. Okay, so we filled up the wine. Um, ooh, we could put Yanga Cola powder in the in one of them. All right, let's go talk to him and see if he'll have a drink. Colonel, with us. sir. Captain. But you have the air of powder, if you remember. Officer. We'll give him some more accuracy Flux. in his vision. Unfortunately, I'm afraid that we frontier soldiers are often forgotten by the military administration. Ah, oh, there's no justice. I sympathize with you, Captain. Let us forget our worries for a moment and have a little drink together in the name of friendship. Uh, it would be my pleasure, miss, but the regulations strictly forbid it. Hmm. Come on. A little glass of wine never hurt anybody, and nobody may know. Wine, miss? You are putting me in a very delicate situation. <laughs> Don't deny yourself, Captain. Just a Listen little Listen to her glass. seductive voice. I assure you. It Don't deny sense. yourself, Captain. Well, <laughs> perhaps just a drop. He looks like he's wearing a robe. Here's your glass. To your good health, Captain. And to yours, Miss. <coughs> Uh-oh. Don't die. He just tossed that whole glass back. Mm. It's been a long time since I've drunk wine in such pleasant company. I admit, it is excellent. Isn't it? You wouldn't think it came from Barrickstadt. It is made from the Amazon Forest Sauvignon grape that has been miraculously conserved and cultivated in the station garden. Well, well, well. The university authorities kept that one to themselves. Indeed they did. You know, Captain, it is essential that I continue my journey eastwards. Please, don't even think about it. As I've said, it's extremely dangerous. The enemy is spying on us. Perhaps your Cossack horseman isn't quite what you thought. Perhaps it's just a dead tree twisted into a strange shape. You should take another look. You never know. Go on, Captain. Give it a try. So be it. I will make this concession to the fairer sex, miss. But it does seem to be quite ridiculous. Hopefully it affected his eyes. <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> Incredible. How is this possible? By what strange magic? How could I have been so wrong for so long? The enemy was only a tree. I'm so ashamed. Aww. It's not that bad, Captain. It's only human to make mistakes, after all. A tree. Nothing but a dead tree. Pull yourself together, Captain. It's okay. And now I suppose there's nothing stopping you from issuing me a visa? Yes, of course. There is no more danger. All these years. And now the Cossack has gone. There is nothing left to watch. Oh, he's Captain, so you sad. should be delighted. From now on, you don't have to stay pinned to your watchtower. Travel can start up again normally. 
you will be able to resume your regular duties like issuing entrance and exit visas. <laughs> you are right. And I will sign you a, a visa across the wall frontier immediately. A thousand apologies. Here, miss. Thank you, sir. All right, authorization to cross border. Cool. Thank you, Captain. And keep your eyes open. <sighs> Miss, if we could keep this between ourselves, please. For the sake of my honor, Indeed. you understand? You have to tell promise, everyone. <laughs> We have to wait for him to meander back to his spot before we can leave. Okay. Hopefully this will be good enough for Oscar. Oscar. I have my exit visa. Oscar, can't you please forget about procedure just your request? Is okay, see it. Yes, Jane. Sorry, I forgot I used to take it out and actually like hand it. Exit visa. Here is the visa. I hope it's regulation, my dear Oscar. Does he have a little mustache? Mm -hmm. I didn't even notice mm -hmm. that. That's cute. It is regulation. Here is your ticket. Head back to the train, give Oscar our ticket, and let's get out of here finally. I feel like this game is gonna take 20 hours just because of all the walking. Back and forth and all that stuff. Alright, train ticket. Here you go, Oscar. Thank you, Kate Walker. Now, please return to your seat, Kate Walker. Kate Walker. Yes, Oscar. Immediately, Oscar. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Seems the windmill has something to do with opening the gate. I don't know, but it wasn't spinning before. And of course, our train has a perfect little key for the gate. What happens when a train comes through that doesn't have that? I'm pretty sure that's not a standard. feature on all trains. <laughs>
Magi. Hmm, looks like we're arriving in some sort of mine or something. Here's a scythe. Maybe not a mine, I don't know. Alright, let's see where we have ended up. Okay, should we go left or right? Let's try right. There's another dude to the scythe down there. Hmm. Oscar, where are Kate you? Kate Walker! Kate Walker! Oscar, what's going on? Why is the train stopped? Where are we? It seems very dark. The springs here. of the train are unwound again, Kate oh, Walker. Great. As for the question pertaining to our geographical location, I really haven't the slightest idea. Well, we better get looking for a winding machine, my dear Oscar. I hope that this place actually has one. The air here is so polluted that I could not possibly risk leaving the locomotive. My joints might corrode irreparably. Mm -hmm. Right. Oscar. Let's see. You just don't want to come with me anywhere, lazy. Okay, let's try looking on the bright side here. I need to stretch my legs. Is there something wrong, Kate Walker? Are you uncomfortable? Are the passenger facilities on this train substandard? I shall draw up a formal complaint form for you immediately. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Yes, Oscar, everything's fine, I assure you. A little walk will do me good, that's all. Okay. Gosh, it's really gloomy here. I wonder where on earth I'm going to find a winding machine. I have total confidence in you, Kate Walker. You are, after all, a brave and resourceful woman. Oh, thank you. Yeah, right. Hypocrite. <laughs> Oscar, you couldn't make a little effort for just this once. If we both went looking for the winding machine, the two of us together might find it quicker. You are in all probability correct, Kate Walker. But the high level of heavy metal miasma that pollutes the atmosphere could cause havoc to my wheel work. Okay. Let's hope Hans Varlberg once lived here as well. Maybe he planned for his locomotive's unplanned stop and installed a winding machine as well. Otherwise, it's not looking great if for the rest of the journey. If we know anything about Hans Varlberg, we should know that, that he Hans probably Wahlberg did. Hans is a genius in the true sense of the word. But is he a genius with a sense of forward planning? <laughs> we will find that out when we find the winding machine. I'm pretty sure he did. God, Oscar, what would I do without you? Really Simply wind up the spring and we can set off immediately. From your mouth to God's ears. Simple. See you soon, Not Oscar. Ever. I simple. shall stay right here, Kate Walker. Alright. So let's see. I kind of want to see what's on the other side of the train, see if we can even get off on that side. Even though it might take a while to do, but just to make sure. So I know not to get off on that side again. <laughs> yep, we can't. Okay, good. That will put my mind at ease. Okay. Alright, so let's go forward, onward, to find the winding machine. Okay, so... This looks like some kind of industrial area. We could go in here, but let's go down here first and see what, if anything, is down here. Some kind of ladder. And it looks like that's about all we can go. Just up the ladder. Let's Maybe we can get a better look at something. It's a little house. Let's see what's here. We need a key for something. And there's a slot. That's going to work. It looks like something's missing. Yes. Okay, so we have... There's like a slot to put something in and a keyhole. The typical Varalberg keyhole. What's this? A voice box. Alright, we can go listen to it in the train. 
And I think that's probably about all that's here. I don't see anything else. So I wonder if Hans lived here in that little apartment, <laughs> if that's what you could call it. Alright, should we go back to the train first to listen to the voice cylinder? Not voice box, voice cylinder. Maybe it'll give us some clues to go on as we go into that area. Come on, Kate, you can do that faster. <laughs> All right, in we go. Go back here. Okay, so let's get our voice cylinder. Let's see what's up. My dear brother, what joy to have news of you after your long silence during the war years. So you're working for the Russians now. I tell you, we've been hearing must some be in stories about them here. Just your description of that dingy factory makes me cough. But it's so good to hear that your talent is being recognized for its true value, and that your automaton creations are taking the place of workers for all those menial jobs. I'm so proud that Vorlberg automatons are making such a contribution, even if it is small, to the improvement of people's lives. Meanwhile, back in Valadolin, we've been licking our wounds after the war years. Some people have returned, others not. Life is slowly coming back, but it's taking time. All my love, Anna. All right, so that's one of her letters to him. Because if you'll remember, when sh we saw that letter um, that she wrote to him, she said, sorry, I can't make a voice cylinder this time, which implied that that was their way of communicating was the voice cylinder, was their typical way of communicating, whereas the letter was not. All right, so now let's go take a look inside this factory or whatever you want to call it. It looked like a mine or something to me, but it sounded like Anna called it a factory. door is locked. Oh. I've got to find another way around. Okay, we can't go in there then. Um. Hmm. Can we go this way? No, oh, I don't want to go straight. I want to go this way. Ugh. Okay. Um. Damn it, that's not where I want to go. Okay, at least... Let's see. So we can't go there. That will just take us back down the platform. Um... Hmm. I didn't think there was a way to go over here. Maybe, does this thing go up and over and I just missed the other side? I don't think so. I think it just led to the bedroom. Oops. Yeah, I don't see a door. Hmm. But this has to do something. This has to be a way to wind the train, I would guess. I don't know. I'm not sure what it has to be. <laughs> I guess it doesn't have to be anything. Um, alright. This can't be anything we can use yet. Hmm, I have 
have to be missing a turn somewhere. tried going there and that just... Oh, did we come out down this way yet? Oh! Oh, a lever. I didn't even see that at first. Elevator! Handy dandy elevator! Man, we're racking up those roaming charges, aren't we? Hello? Hello? She's Dave? from New York. Dan, can you hear me? Da Dan, is that you? I can't hear you so good. Dan? Hey, can you talk? It's about the last conversation. I, are you still mad at me? Come on, this is, it's important. Dan, you're breaking up. I'll try and call you when I get out of this mine. You're it is a mine. Hey, come on, what's happening? Listen, we've got to talk. Look, the line's just getting worse and worse. I'm hanging up. <laughs> oh, Kate, your home life is falling apart because of this trip. All right, what is this? If that's going to work, it looks like something's missing. Indeed it does. Okay, so we need something to put in that, whatever that is. Um, let's go down here. In the dark. It's too dark to continue. I might lose my way. Okay. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. But yeah, she's from New York. She's been taking calls in France. She's been taking calls... In that looks like a ventilation Germany. duct. She's been taking calls in Russia. That looks like now. a ventilation duct. All right, we have a ventilation duct here. Hmm. Let's see. What can we put in there? I don't. What's this? I don't need to do that. Oh, pull the lever. Um, what do we have? We have nothing in our inventory. Um, hmm. I feel like there's nowhere else to go. Oh, hey, the bed, the bedroom was up in this guy's crotch. <laughs> well, the only place that had anything was that bedroom and that mine. But we couldn't go into that mine because it was too dark, so clearly we're missing something from the bedroom, unless I'm missing a turn somewhere. So let's go up into this bedroom. Did. I thought so. Huh, okay, so this is the guy that we're in his crotch. <laughs> so it's circling something down here that we have to find. 
What's this? Ah, is that a lever? For this, maybe? Or is it for the thing that was in the mine? Aha! It is for this. Okay, well, that's not doing anything. Um, Alright, let's go down and find where that drawing was circling. If we can. Okay, we can't examine it, so... Hmm. see. Did I move the le lever incorrectly? It was only going down. Maybe I needed to push it up? Let's look at it again. Oh. Oh, it's moving. He's rolling forward. Look at us standing in the crotch. <laughs> nice design, Hans. Okay, so we've moved forward. Now maybe we'll be able to inspect that back leg that the drawing was referring to. Or we can go see what this is. Okay, so it looks like we could use something in this hole, because we could tell by the cursor, but I don't think anything we have would do any good for now, so let's come back to that. <coughs> um, or can I not get down? Okay, well, I can't get down. I can't do anything there. Let's go back up and fiddle with that lever. I wonder if we can move it up even more. Can we? Yes, we can. Okay, now it's over the train. Oh, I wonder if the winding mechanism was on the back of the leg, and that's what he was pointing to in the drawing. Kate. I can't go that way. Why not? Why not? Why can't you go that way? Um... Oh, hey, it's a button. Yeah. Well, that was fast. Okay, well, now we can't get down. And so I guess we're going to have to go all the way back to where we originally were, I suppose. move back again because we know we can't get out right there because we have to jump onto that platform all right so let's get down now
Hey! Some guy was hey, on our train. You there! Uh oh. You better not have stolen something. Shit. Let's follow him. Did he steal my stuff? I'm gonna guess he stole the mammoth doll. <laughs> Door is locked. Oh shit, I've he gotta find another way him. around. Let's go back and check what he stole. Where's Oscar? Who's calling us? Yes? Kate, can you hear me this time? Yes, I can hear you just perfectly, Dan, but I can't talk to you now. I'm in a real hurry. I wanted to say sorry. I know I wasn't very understanding last time. I've been feeling a bit bad about it. Okay, you're a real sweetheart, but I've got to leave you now. I'm not angry with you, so don't worry. I've just got to catch up to <laughs> I have someone and quit. better things to do right now than worry about but you Kate, and our Kate, relationship. This is really important. I'll call you back, Dan. I'm sorry. She's such a bitch. All right, where's Oscar? Let's go find him. Oscar's not there, and. Let's go check what we have gotten stolen from us, because I have a feeling. Oscar, talk to me. <laughs> I didn't know automatons could be gagged. What's this? Some clippers? Let's help him out. It is dark here in Russia. Are you okay? Why, it is absolutely inadmissible, intolerable, and... Where did and hands go? Indescribable! I... I have been attacked! What do you mean you've been attacked? My hands! I no longer have them! They have been stolen! My god, you haven't got your hands! But who did this? What's going on here? We can be sure of one thing, Kate Walker. That this heinous crime was committed by a barbarian. A dysfunctional individual whose behavior lacks all finesse! Did you get a look at your attacker? Tell me exactly how it happened. I was standing here polishing up my metalwork. I was just thinking that with all the dust in the air, it would be a good idea to... Oscar! <laughs> I was very busy, and I suddenly felt two powerful arms grab me from behind and tie me up before I had the chance to defend myself. I wanted to call out, but my attacker gagged me before I could emit the slightest sound. Then, he dismantled my hands with a terrifying pair of pliers. It was horrible. I can believe it, my poor Oscar, but did you see him? He was a you know, real I bet we could use those pliers on that he metal wall. He had bloodshot eyes, wall. steel teeth, and brown scaly skin, and he emitted foul odors. He was a monster, Kate Walker, a real monster, and he had a weapon. Oscar, please calm down. Everything's going to be all He's right. He's traumatized. All right, let's ask him about everything. Who the heck would be interested in automaton hands? Even though I say so myself, my hands are two marvels of technology. Please promise to return them to me intact as quickly as possible. I am very attached to them, Kate Walker. Or not attached you to them. You were <laughs> attached to them, Oscar. But like you said, I'm a brave and resourceful woman. Thank you, Kate Walker. But please, above all, do be careful. Don't you worry about that, Oscar. Okay. Right, Oscar. Let's go find this hand bandit. Hand bandit. And this time, we're not going to be such a pushover. Kate Walker, please do not think that this problem does not concern me. But if it's all the same to you, I would so much prefer to stay here, just to be on the safe side. An engineer never abandons his train, after all. 
Yeah, sure. Another good reason not to lend a... <laughs> I mean, not to help me out. Kate Walker, even an automaton deserves a little compassion. I have just been savagely assaulted. Oh, I can feel one of my spasms coming on. <laughs> I am on the verge of a clockwork breakdown. <laughs> and all you do is accuse me of being selfish. A clockwork okay, breakdown. Okay, take a rest, Oscar. You're not much use without your hands anyway. All right. Anything else you remember, Oscar? I have told you everything, and I'd rather not think about it anymore. How old do you think your attacker was? How old? Such monsters are ageless. I tell you, my wheel work froze with fear. <laughs> I think he must have been an older man. Someone with a soft spot for automatons. An expert. Who knows how to dismantle a pair of hands with a pair of pliers? She thinks it might be I'm Hans? afraid I don't quite follow you. And what if it was Hans Varlberg himself? Kate Walker, in spite of the respect in which I hold you, permit me to say that such an idea is stupid. <laughs> Hans Varlberg, my attacker. A father would never attack his offspring. Get a grip on yourself. I should point out in all modesty that my attacker must have had muscles to overcome an automaton of my build. Hmm. Maybe you're right there, Oscar. I do apologize. Okay. Do you know if your attacker stole anything else? As soon as he'd swiped my hands, he ran away. Well, at least that's one good piece of news. The train's still intact. What do you mean, intact? I am the train engineer! It was designed for me, and I for it. By maiming me in this brutal manner, the Barbarian has also mutilated our locomotive. Without me and my hands, we're never going anywhere. Sure, right. okay. Could you maybe tell me how the train works, then? That is strictly forbidden, Kate Walker. There is only one engineer, and that train engineer is me. I am sure you don't have a license or authorization or even a deputy engineer's permit. Oh, Oscar. Do you really think it's the right moment to get wrapped up in red tape, Oscar? <laughs> regulations are regulations, Kate Walker. All right, so Oscar can't right. drive the I'm train done. even though we've figured out how yourself, to wind Oscar. it. Good luck, Kate Walker. And don't forget me. We won't forget you, Oscar. What do you think? All right, so I'm going to bet that we can use those pliers on that w that metal wall that we saw. If that was Hans, though, why would he come in and take Oscar's hands and not the, the mammoth doll? That's all he ever seemed to really want. All right, so I'm going to head back to the tower where the um, bedroom is. And see if we could use, see if my hypothesis is correct. Okay, let's see. See if we could cut through that wall that was already kind of like ripped apart. Okay, so we want to move this up once. And then see if I could cut a bigger hole for us to fit through. Alright, so let's get out. Get out of here. Okay, I guess it's not a metal wall, it's like a m sheet metal on, on a door, I mean on a window. Okay, so let's try to cut it, yes we can, booyah. So now we can enter the room. 
all right so now that we're in i'm gonna end this video here so in the next video we'll continue exploring this mine i guess <laughs> and see if we can't find oscar's hands and the burglar who stole them so stay tuned for that video and thanks so much for watching bye